good morning everyone welcome to the today's session model number 4 design for shreya in psc members this is professor uma shankar eliga assistant professor department of civil engineering gurunanak dev engineering college bethi this is the third session okay in the today's session we'll cover this following topics okay initially we'll just put the general comments based on the session 1 and the session 2 of the previous classes then we will just review once again the design steps already we have seen the formulas stress strength of concrete uh, for cracker section and cracker section in the previous class so okay, then just we'll review the steps how we are going to design the beams for shear and then we'll just see the some examples on rectangular section for design of shear or design of transverse reinforcement general comments the objective of design is to provide the ultimate resistance of shear greater than the shear demand under the ultimate loads means the shear demand under ultimate load means this is the the shear force due to the uh, the ultimate loads means this is the applied shear force okay the applied shear force which is coming on my beam but whereas this is the ultimate shear resistance means which will take care of this the shear force which is coming on the beam always the resistance should be greater than the applied ultimate load okay this is the main objective or motto of any design then if you take a simply supported pre stressed beam the maximum shear near the support the maximum shear is near the support and is given by beam theory we know that whenever you take a simply supported beam with the udl load generally we are getting okay we are getting the maximum shear force from near to the support but if you take a continuous pre stressed beams okay then we need to do some rigorous analysis okay in that time we are using what is the moment distribution method or any other method or, okay from your analysis of determinant and indeterminate structures okay, you can use the number of methods for continuous beams then or otherwise you can use also a shear coefficient which is mentioned in table number 13 of is 456 2000 okay for under the conditions of uniform cross section of beams uniform loads and similar length of the span okay if this is a condition then you can use the shear coefficient from this i uh, is 456 table of that okay in this way by using these things okay we can calculate what is the the shear force which is coming on the p then the general comments the design is done for the critical section always we will do the design for the critical section okay most important okay we need, we need to design for critical condition okay then first whenever we want to design for critical condition then we need to decide what is critical section okay critical section is one where you are getting the maximum the moment where the maximum moment or where the maximum shear force is acting okay if we transfer to this design where the maximum shear force is acting and where we are getting the maximum failure due to the shear force okay and where we are getting the maximum the maximum critical section okay normally a critical section is defined in clause number 22.6.2 of is 456 okay that is that in general cases the face of the support is considered as critical section okay because of this reason normally we will take it as what is base of the support as considered as a critical section okay when the reaction at the support induces compression at the end of the beam okay whenever the reaction at the support if it induces the compression at the end of the beam then critical section is selected at a distance of effective depth from face of the support okay this you generally you will observe while designing the footings in your the rcc members okay normally you are taking that one way shear it is critical at a distance or at a distance of effect to the b from the face of the column okay means be there the member is subjected to what a compression okay if the reaction is subjected to a compression then 
you are taking the critical section at a distance of effective depth d from the face of the support. Then the effective depth is selected as a greater of dp and ds. Okay, dp is the depth of CGS. Okay, from the extreme compression fiber. Means it is due to what is the pre stressing steel. And whereas DS, it is a depth of centered of non pre stressed steel. Means it is a normal RCC steel. Okay, this is first one is due to the, the PSC steel. Second one is due to the normal mild steel bar or HOSD bars. Since the CGS, okay, this one, since CGS is higher, is at higher location near the support. Okay, when you go to the near the support, normally this CGS, CGS will be at the higher location near the support. Higher location means if you come to the near to the support, if you whenever you are providing a parabolic cable near to the support, this depth is very, very less. Okay, this cable is the Now near to the uh, the support, okay, the effective depth will be taken as ds because the near to the support when the cable is parabolic, this is a parabolic cable at the bottom you are providing the normal steel. Okay, if you compare to this cable and this normal steel, okay, the normal steel is at a higher depth at the higher depth. This will be what the depth, but this is there at the higher location. That's why normally we are taking the ds as the effective depth when you are doing for the near the support okay ds means the effective depth of the normal steel okay the normal mild steel normally uh, we can vary the spacing of stirrups we can vary the spacing of stirrups along the span okay other sections may be selected for design Usually, the following scheme is selected for beams under the uniform loop. Okay, normally we can go for closed spacing for quarter of, for quarter of the span adjacent to the supports and wide spacing for half of the span at the middle. Since we are, we know that near to the support, okay, here we have what is the maximum shear force. Okay, that's why we need to provide what is the closed spacing. Okay, at the quarter span, we need to space the stirrup at a close spacing but whereas in between okay here the shear force is very very less okay shear force is less here and that's why what we can do you can go for okay you can go for what is the wide spacing okay and here also you once again near to the support maximum shear force you can go for what is close spacing okay this type of variation you may select okay and if you want to make this type of variation and you need to design for the different section okay once you need to design share at here and once you need to design share at this section okay otherwise you can design at the ultimate section then you can provide what is the uniform spacing for the entire beam length okay then design steps In the design steps these are the following quantities quantities which are known one is view the applied shear force or factored shear at the ultimate loads. Okay, if it is a simply supported beam with UDL load, the support reaction at supports will be what here WL by 2. Okay, that is what a view the applied shear force. This is due to the, due to the gravity loads and this is calculated from live load and also the dead load shear force. Then video shear due to dead load, shear due to the line. And after a member is designed for flexion, because in the previous model. We already we have designed the member for flexure. Okay, from there we know the self weight is known and it is included as a dead load. The grade of concrete also we know from the previous model flexure design. Grade of steel also we know and for stirrups, okay, we need to select the grade of stirrups here. 
but as per is 139980 the grade of steel is limited to what a fe 415 and this following quantities are unknown we need to calculate how much is shear resisted by the concrete and how what is the area of stirrups we need to provide and what is the spacing of those stirrups okay this is what we need to calculate by using the formulas which we have seen in the previous two sessions the design steps the steps for designing stirrups the steps for designing stirrups along the length of the beam are given below first you need to calculate the applied shear force shear demand at the critical section okay then you need to check whether vu by bdt less than tau c max or not where tau c max you will get from your table number 7 is 1343 then you need to check whether this condition is satisfied or not if it is satisfied no problem if it is not satisfied once again you need to increase the section and then ultimately you need to satisfy this condition where b is the breadth of the web or breadth of the beam in rectangular section dt is the larger of dp and ds okay the depth of pressure sink steel depth of the normal steel then you need to calculate the what is the shear resisted by the concrete vc okay there are two formulas one is vc not other one is vcr vc not is for uncracked section vcr is for cracked section you need to calculate these two values okay then if there is any inclined tendons are there okay there, then you are getting what a vertical free stress okay, that we have discussed in the previous session then you need to add the free stressing force vp to the vc not okay you can add that force to the water vc not then calculate the shear reinforcement by using the this uh, the formulas which you have seen in the previous session okay then you decide the maximum spacing at that you can round up to what the multiple of 5 mm then you find the size and number of flex of the stirrups okay based on the amount required type of section space to accommodate and then repeat the calculation for other location of beam if the spacing of stirrups needs to be varied okay in this way generally we will follow the procedure to design the stirrups in psc member under the, the under the shear condition let this is the example number 1 the support section of a pre stressed concrete beam 100 mm wide and 250 mm deep is required to support an ultimate shear force of 60 kN the compressive stress at the centroidal axis is 5 N per mm square the characteristic cu cubic strength of concrete is 40 N per mm square the cover to the tension reinforcement is 50 mm if the characteristic tensile strength of the steel in stirrups 250 N per mm square design a suitable reinforcements at is at the section using the indian standard 1343 recommendations this is a question what is given he has given the rectangular section where your breadth is what 100 mm and depth is what 250 mm and effective depth is what 200 as he has given the cover as what the cover for tension reinforcement is how much 50 mm okay depth is 250 mm 250 minus 50 you will get what an effective depth as a 200 then he has given the shear force the ultimate shear force 60 kN that is what is the vu okay that is what your the vu and fcp is equal to 5 N per mm square the compressive stress at centroidal axis he has given and then fck is given grade of concrete and fi is given the grade of the steel for the stirrups okay now we need to design what is stress the shear reinforcement or transverse reinforcement then here uh, normally we, we have seen the procedure that we need to calculate two values we need to calculate the two values one is vc not other one is vcr okay we need to calculate the two values but normally what happens 
share force is maximum under the support okay generally we will not calculate vcr we will calculate only what here vc not okay and which is equal to what from the, this formula it is there in your the is 1343.067 bw into h or in some textbook it is there as b into d square root of ft square plus 0.8 fcp into ft okay then first we will calculate ft ft is equal to 0.24 square root of fck fck is given 40 then if you calculate this you will get this as what 1.517 newton per m square okay then we know bw it is, and we know h the depth of the section and we have calculated the ft okay yes given fcp has given in the question okay ft we know the values and if you substitute all the values here okay then you will get this as what a 48457 newton in terms of kilonewton 48.4 kilonewton okay then after calculating this okay then we need to check the applied load is less than or greater than okay the applied load is how much 60 kilonewton okay we know that the applied is given how much 60 kilonewton but here you have got how much 48 kilonewton hence v is greater than the v is greater than vc hence it is what if unsafe okay when it is unsafe then we need to calculate what a balance shear v minus vc 60 minus 48.4 which is how much 11.6 kilo newton okay then assume 6 mm diameter two leg stirrups then you calculate what is spacing by the formula which is given in your is 134344 okay the formula is this asv means area of stirrups okay here i have taken 6 mm two leg okay this two times of area of the 6 mm bar means this is two times of 28.2 0.87 we know fi 250 as your da effective depth 200 okay substitute the values v minus vc we have calculated here 11.6 kilonewton or 111600 uh, newtons okay then you are getting this as what is 211.5 mm and therefore the maximum permissible spacing is 0.75 times of t okay which is how much 150 mm okay and therefore and out of these two values, you can take it what is the lesser value. The lesser value will be what is 150 mm center to center. Okay, in this way, we have to design what is the shape reinforcement. Then the next problem a support section of a pre stressed concrete beam 120 mm wide, 240 mm deep is required to support an ultimate shear force of 75 kilonewton this year he has given the breadth and the depth and he has given what is the view 75 kilonewton okay then the compressive pre-stress at centroidal axis is 5 newton per mm square okay concrete user is 40 mpa fi is 415 cover he has given as what 50 mm okay then you need to design suitable Reinforce, share reinforcement as per 134398. Okay, then these are the things the breadth, the depth, VU, FCP has given, <coughs> FCK has given, FI has given, and he has given the he has given the E the cover. Okay, the cover, concrete cover over share reinforcement is 50 mm okay it is cover it is not e it is cover okay then we we know then we need to use this formula for the support condition because is asked at the support condition he has given the value for support condition then we know b value we know d value and ft we need to calculate ft is equal to 0.24 square root of fck we are getting this value as how much this value is 1.52 newton per mm square then if you substitute all the values fcp is already given then you will get what is the vc naught okay then you need to compare this value with the vc if you compare with vc vc is 75 kilonewton vc naught is 147 hence vu is less than vc naught okay hence it is safe okay even though it is safe we need to provide what is minimum share reinforcement 
even though it is safe we need to provide what a minimum share enforcement the minimum share enforcement is formula is from your ys134 people who asb divided by b into sp 0.487 f5 and if you assume two leg reserves of 8 mm okay f5 is yes, yeah, already we know it is 405 b also we know then you can calculate what a spacing okay and in this way you can calculate what is spacing and here you assume this this is the area what we got then by using the same formula if you substitute the values you will get the spacing okay but as per codal provisions maximum spacing is 0.75 dt or four times of b okay dt means that uh, the effective depth of normal steel and this is what is the 4 into b 4 into bed of the b this is 142.5 mm this is 480 mm then here uh, you need to provide the lowest value lowest value is 142 therefore two leg the 8 mm vertical strips at 140 mm center to center then example number 3 the support section of pre structured concrete b 100 mm wide 250 mm d is required to support an ultimate shear force of 60 kN view compressive stress at central axis is 5 N per mm square the characteristic strength of concrete is 40 the cover is 50 mm if the characteristic strength at length is 250 N per mm square okay design the suitable reinforcement okay b is given coral depth is given view is given fcp is given okay cover also is given this is cover okay fck is given fy is given okay then go for the solution as usual use this formula there is the internal traction problem no then here we are discussing this okay then here you can calculate ft 0.24 square of fck you will get this value then if you substitute all the values you will get the vc not compare Okay, and after comparing that, we came to know that V C not is okay. V C not is less than V U, or V U is greater than V C not. Okay, so that you need to provide what is design the shear enforcement. Use the formula. Okay, they use this formula to calculate the shear enforcement. You know F I, you know D T. Okay, calculate the area of the slabs by assuming the two legged slabs of six mm or eight mm. Okay. Assume the two leg by eight mm slabs. Calculate that area. Then substitute all the values. You will get the spacing as three eighty point six mm. Okay. The maximum spacing is point seven five times of dt or four b. Then out of two values, we need to provide lesser value. Lesser value is one fifty. And so that we can provide one fifty mm center to center. And you can also draw what is the diagram. Okay. You can also draw the diagram. These are the slabs. Which are spaced at one fifty mm center to center. The last problem: a PSC beam of two fifty mm wide, seven fifty mm deep, is subjected to a shearing force of nine hundred kilo newton. The fiber stress under the working load is four newton per mm square. If the effective pre-stress is thousand newton per mm square. And the area of cable is 1,500 mm square. Design the shear enforcement. The cables are inclined at an angle of arc sine inverse of 1 by 6. Means here you have a cable is what a parabolic cable. Okay, the previous one the cable properties is not given, but here he has given the cable properties. Means here first V U V has given 900. Here he has given the V. Okay, the shearing force. Means if you want to calculate V U. You need to multiply by 1.5. Okay, load factor so that you will get 1350 kilonewton. FCP is given. The 
the fiber stress under working load is 4 newton per mm square fck is given we have assumed this value where p is equal to he has given the stress as 1000 area of cable as 1500 okay then you will get what is this is the 1500 kilometer p okay theta is given the cable at angle sine inverse of 1 by 6 in fed cable okay ft is equal to 0.24 square root of fck you get this as what is 1.52 newton per mm square then use the formula okay in this one you know b value you know d value you know d ft value and you know fcp value and he has given the inclined cable that's why for this formula we need to add what a p sine theta okay otherwise it is not required but whenever the inclined cable is there we need to add what a the vertical free stress impose okay that is what a p sine theta due to the inclined cable okay and if you substitute all the values here we know the p and we know that theta okay sine inverse of 1 by 6 is given theta is equal to okay if you substitute this value you will get what here vc not 586.48 kN. but where vu is equal to how much vu is given as 1350 kN. but the bottom obtained is how much 586.48 okay hence the vc not is less than vu hence it is what here unsafe then we need to design what here the stirrups okay assume four legged of 10 mm vertical stirrups okay this is the area what we'll get and this is the dt 750 is the overall depth minus 100 okay minus 100 is the effective cover you will get what is 650 mm then use this formula okay substitute all the values you know vu vc not fi dt asv you are assumed but you need to calculate what is sv you got SV as 96.56 mm. Okay, then uh, there is another condition is there always you need to calculate VU by VC not 2.3 because when VU is greater than 1.8 times of VC not, then maximum spacing formula is different. But whenever this VU is less than 1.8 times of VC not, then the maximum spacing is different. But here it is greater than, but whereas previous problem it is less than. If it is greater than, the maximum spacing is 0.5 times of TT. We have got is what 325 mm. Therefore, okay, the 96 and 325, the minimum is what? The minimum is 95 mm. Okay, we need to provide four leg strips of 95 mm center to center. Okay, in this way, we have to design the shear reinforcement for the problem. And this is the, the sketch, uh, the rough sketch of the, uh, the reinforcement diagram. Okay, these are the your strips. Okay, in this way, we have to design the transverse re reinforcement or shear reinforcement in the PSC section. Okay, thank you. Okay. In the next class, uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask in your WhatsApp group or in the YouTube link. Okay, thank you. Thank you, one and all. In the next session, we will go for the, the calculation of principal stresses okay under the analysis of share okay in psc members okay. thank you thank you